Legend has it that the Eastern Pacific was once frequented by pirates. But to be a successful pirate, you need a place to hide. And out here, the best place is Cocos Island. There's so many legends and myths of uh, pirates and people coming here in the old days and that I can't imagine the excitement to see all of this and be like, what? There's this piece of land in the middle of the ocean? Whether these tales are fact or fiction, Cocos does provide some refuge for species in the open ocean. Namely, migrating marine animals that gather here. Animals are not spread out evenly throughout the oceans. They tend to aggregate at particular locations where they can find food or refuge. And oceanic islands like Cocos is a classic example. Well, it just so happens that Cocos Island is the only emergent part of an underwater mountain range. What is it then about this mountain range that attracts these animals? So far, the best clue we have to that mystery is Cocos Island itself. The outline is really ragged, eh? Yeah, I was noticing the big uh, boulders that are on top of the... You can see how the whole island is of volcanic origin, right? You see the lava kind of shooting up and then it's eroding around it. But you can still see these lava chimneys, like that one. Yeah. And then you wonder how trees got here, right? Exactly. How does the sea travel so far? <laughs> what do you think? Birds. The birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so Cocos is in fact the top of a volcano. Could there be a connection between this volcanic island and what lives in the waters around it? We're going ashore to search for treasure. Okay, maybe not the pirate kind, but we are hoping to find out what makes this place so rich with life. It's incredible the amount of life that has here. Que tiene acá demasiados epífitos, vemos aquí briófitos y líquenes y es increíble. It reminds me of uh, the walls we see underwater, exactly. they're also covered in life. Every little bit has something clinging to it, it's the same on this tree. Whoa! <laughs> that was close. Yeah, I got pooped on. <laughs> There's more coming down. Yep. Yeah, greedy strong action. <laughs> and you know, the, the amazing thing is, this is essentially ground up and digested fish, right? And there's nutrients too, right? I mean, this is, this is all bird poop, which essentially fertilizes the forest. So it cycles from the ocean to land and back into the ocean. This transfer of poop is one example of what's known as the nitrogen cycle. A bird eats a fish. The bird then poops, and the nitrogen from that poop helps fertilize the plants and trees on the island. Those decompose and wash into the ocean, providing nitrogen for plankton and algae, which then get eaten by fish, who then get eaten by birds, who then poop on Cocos Island. You get it, it's a cycle. And nitrogen is an essential element, like oxygen, for all living things, including us. But maybe that's not the only reason Cocos Island attracts so much life. To get a complete picture, we have to trade our hiking boots for flippers and head below the surface. Una, dos, tres, vaya! Follow the slope of Cocos Island to the seafloor, it extends for nearly three kilometers. Imagine a wall three kilometers high. That's 30 times taller than the Statue of Liberty. When the conditions are right, currents collide with this wall and it creates a phenomenon known as upwelling. That's when nutrient rich water from the bottom mixes up with warm water from the surface. The end result? A hardy and healthy feeding ground for many marine species. This upwelling only happens around the few islands and seamounts scattered throughout the open ocean. Which is one reason why Cocos is a perfect rest stop for a migrating animal after a long day, a week, or even months of traveling. 
there may not be any pirates hiding out here anymore, but there are hundreds of species who still depend on all the island has to offer. Migratory species in the marine environment often are subjected to a lot of different pressures and threats. It's important that wherever people are, we coordinate if we want to reduce those threats. 